weather sucks. Sucks a big fat one. Gotta love hurricane season. Not to say this is, well actually no, I think it is a hurricane or it will be a hurricane. Category one, but whatever. It is what it is. I want to make this video just a little, you know, just casual, just kind of getting you up to speed on things because I don't really have much else to do. As you very well can see, which sucks because I got a busy week ahead of me. So I wanted to fit a couple of videos in uh, if I could. Um, actually, no, just one video. So I'm actually really excited for this video because it's another test video. Before I hint what that video is, I want to kind of go ahead and talk about uh, the last video I did with the spark plugs. Now I know I mentioned in the video with the side gap plugs that I was gonna switch out to the ruthiniums, but actually they're still in the car. I've been driving around with them. I've noticed a couple things. Now the, the plugs are still a little iffy. There's still some occasional misfiring at higher load, lower RPM situations, and especially when the car is a little cold, and it doesn't run the best when it gets heat in it, especially during high load situations, things are a bit better. I gotta tell you, I knew something quite wasn't right, not to say that these plugs make more power than like the ruthiniums on this particular engine, but I still thought it was crazy that there was enough power being left behind to make almost a half a second difference between just spark plug changes. So I decided to do something that I have not done on Buster yet with the tune. And it's mainly because of just not wanting to get too involved with the tuning and stressing out, you know, the computer and whatnot. But I finally decided to take a close look at the uh, spark dwell settings and seeing what that was all about. And honestly, I actually, I couldn't believe what I saw. I opened up the spark dwell settings and I'll take a screenshot here. It was one and a half, I think 1.8 milliseconds on the high end. That ain't nothing. You can see in the lower areas where it's like 15 milliseconds, you know, it's, it's a lot of dwell in the lower end, but on the high end, that's horrible. That leaves hardly any time for that spark plug to ignite the mixture good enough. So I'm like, I gotta change this. So I just went and took some settings in one of the columns and copied it all the way across, which is about just a little over three milliseconds. And I be damned. Now I haven't tested the car yet, but I be damned if by basically doubling the dwell time, I didn't pick up probably 30 or 40 pound feet of torque in the upper RPMs, like right before shift points. I was quite surprised, considering that the uh, side gap plugs are still in there. So maybe by increasing the dwell, it's actually giving these side gap plugs a pretty fair shake. Perhaps I need to redo that video. And now with more dwell time on the uh, ignition coils, I think there's actually power to be made. Maybe with the, the side cap plug, that is pretty crazy. But, and I also have been reading because I know, that, you know, the benefits of a, of the coils that I put in there, this Granatelli coils. Okay, yeah, great that they have a higher output, but generally they also have a thicker winding of coil and you need more time to energize that coil all the way. That's why these, uh, you know, performance coils will benefit when you adjust the dwell time. It seems like there wasn't too much of a difference by just swapping them in. Although there was, I think it's because the factor coils were just crap. I think now after adjusting the dwell time, it really is, is using the coils to their benefit. I was reading that certain Granatelli coils, they can go all the way up to 10 milliseconds. Now I'm not gonna go that far, but I wonder if even going to about five milliseconds, how they would fare out. I'm not so much worried about the coils themselves being damaged, but the coil drivers in the PCM or ECU, whatever the hell it's called anymore, I don't know. In the computer, that's what I'm uh, more or less concerned about by adjusting that too much. So maybe I'll have to see like for just a fun video, you know, running the car one run at five milliseconds may not be that big of a deal, you know, but I wouldn't probably want to do it over long periods of time. Three where I'm at, maybe three and a half would be good. So that could be another video I can do and compare the stock dwell times to what I have now and then maybe at five milliseconds. 
because I can tell you it is noticeable seat of the pants. The butt dyno has detected an increase in power and torque because usually as it gets towards the top, the boost does trail off a bit, even though it starts adding more timing. I never felt like it was making the power it should be making up top, considering the amount of timing that it's running up top. And still we're running 20, you know, 3, 24, 25 PSI. At red line, you think it would be really cooking and it never felt like that. But now, now it feels like it's cooking up top, like it should be. It feels a lot stronger up top on the shifts. To me, that means there's more complete combustion, more cylinder pressure and all of that. Cause I'm also dumping a crap ton more fuel with the aux fuel system. So I need a hot spark to burn everything efficiently. And I think adjusting that dwell made the biggest difference. So yeah, there's that gonna be working on that here probably in the next couple weeks. Like I said, this week is chocked full of stuff. Now, there is one video I would love to get out this week, um, if anything. Well, I'm also gonna do another test with fuels. So all I'm gonna say, and all I'm gonna show you is this blue can right here. And you can see who it's from. That's all you're going to see. I'll be doing some more hints right before the video, but this just gets you a little excited. I thought it'd be fun to run some exotic fuels through the auxiliary fuel system and see if I could pick up any power just by switching fuels. So I have some pretty special stuff in that pail right there that I would love to test out and see if there's any performance gains with it. So there is that. Here's something else I'm thinking of. I have a lot of ideas. Obviously, I'm very limited in space in this garage. We all know that I complain about this all the time. But I've been hunting for, like I've been searching on Facebook Marketplace like for like a cheap bandsaw. I need a bandsaw for some fabrication projects because I don't have an efficient way to cut metal and, and other things straight and easy. So I think a bandsaw would be to my benefit for fabrication stuff. I'm hunting around for a bandsaw and if I can get a bandsaw, let me know what you think about this. Let me go under here real quick. Let's pull this out. All right, so here is Buster's old intake manifold on the balloon engine. Remember I decided not to use this. Oh God. Yeah. I didn't realize there was so much crap left in this. Oh my God, it's made a hell of a mess. Good thing I'm getting on my shoes or pants. But I opted not to use this because I knew there was a lot of debris left inside. Look, I can still see metal flakes and stuff in there. Um, but I never even attempted to clean this out. I just went and ordered a new one. But since I have a spare manifold laying around that I can, uh, you know, play with and not have to worry about sacrificing the you know a usable manifold i thought that'd give me a great opportunity to test a couple things that uh, the aftermarket has supplied first of all i would love to do my own porting on this you know port it out and test and see if there's any difference there i also thought hmm It'd be really interesting because if you ever looked how this is constructed, you know, this is all molded plastic, but look, look how this piece is right here, right? Almost like a damn intake spacer. So this is why I kind of also want a bandsaw because if I can hook, you know, run this through a bandsaw and just cut right here along this, cut it down off there like that. I would love to also shorten the runners if I could and see how a short runner, a modified a short runner intake would fare out, especially a combination of short runner and port it, because that's interesting. And I don't know of anyone really doing that. You only see people um, porting these stock intake manifolds. And yeah, there's a fair bit of material you can remove the increased flow a little bit, but how beneficial is a ported manifold on a non-ported cylinder head? Well, that'd be fun to find out, right? If any, so. But what I'm more or less interested is 
making a short runner out of this, a short runner intake, because that would be nice to help move more of the power band up top. Usually that's what you do. But as with a lot of things, when you add boost to the equation, things don't work as the same as they would if it was a non-boosted. So like short runner intake may not affect the power as much or the power band as much as if it was NA, you know, versus boost it. So once again, every engine's different. So this engine might respond well to a short runner intake. In fact, all of the aftermarket intake options for this engine have shorter runners than that one. So that would be interesting to test. Just things that I'm thinking about um, that I can work on without like really trying to push the car too hard. Remember, I'm trying to take it easy on Buster for a little while because I finally got 20,000 miles on the new engine. Been doing great so far. Oh, where's, ah, there's wood. There we go, I know I had some somewhere. Whew. Whew. Okay, we're good. It's probably towards the later of the year, I want to start messing with turbo mods. I've already mentioned this before. It'd be cool to see what happens with a ported turbo and not just a ported turbo, but a completely modified a ported turbo with a larger turbine wheel. That would be interesting to see what happens there. So, but I know everyone's been really enjoying these test videos. And honestly, I have so much fun making them because I just love seeing what makes differences in like, okay, if you do this, will this make a difference? If you do that, will that make a difference? On this platform, not many people do it, you know? And people who do similar videos, they're parts people, you know, they're trying to sell you parts. So they'll put an intake on to show you a difference, you know, positive or whatever, just so you can go and buy said part. I don't have a bias because I am not trying to sell parts. So I can do this testing and say, okay, well, this works or this doesn't work. You know, like hot rodders used to do, you know, trying to figure out how things work. And, you know, and I don't really think a lot of the EcoBoost aftermarket, now they're a couple companies that definitely have gotten their hands dirty with this platform. But some of the more notable companies that are more uh, popular or relevant, relevant right now, I think they're kind of lazy when it comes to really digging into, you know, what people can do to make this car better. Like I said, they just care about selling parts. So they're just gonna sell what they know. They're not interested in, in, in putting time and in, in developing or testing and doing fun stuff like this. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna continue to do that because I think there's a lot of cool things you can do uh, to get more power out of this setup. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money on. You don't need to, you know, uh, buy super exotic parts to do. So I'm gonna keep working on these videos for fun, you know, cause it's also helping me learn about the car more as well. And uh, honestly, the more that I do, like, you know, these are small little incremental increases that I have encountered, but while these increases, it might be a couple tenths here, a tenth there, you know, half a tenth here or so, while each of those increases don't seem that much one by one, when you stack them all together, you might have a, over a second difference in how the car performs. And that is huge. That is a big benefit. And you gotta think, now the car is covering 40 to 80, and I bet you it can do it in under four seconds, no problem now. And honestly, it has the ability to do 40 to 80 a lot quicker than it shows on the draggy. It's just because I start in third gear, the turbo doesn't really spool up until about 3,500 RPM, 4,000, and then it gets going. So if I start it from a dead stop and just roll through 40 to 80, it would already be so much quicker, but it's because of how I test it, it does slow it down. But that means that the faster that number is, the more impressive it is to me. Like I'm pretty sure now, starting a third gear, 40 to 80, this car is under four seconds. You know, that's pretty quick. And that's full weight, you know, no weight reduction. I can just imagine if there's more to be had just by these small little fine tuning elements, you know, just kind of have to see what works best. I bet you I can definitely get another couple tens here and there just by small little changes to things as I'm testing, I know that fuel is going to be at least worth a tenth minimum. 
couple tenths probably. So that's going to be interesting as I play with ignition more, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? All without like raising the boost, all without adjusting the, the overall tune, just these small little things that are optimizing how the car is. And that's the, that's the important thing is you got to optimize what you have, because if you're not taking full advantage of everything you have, then you, you just aren't. So that's the cool thing about all these little tests that I'm doing is I'm, I'm finding where everything kind of works the best, if you will. And I'm sure by the end of all this small little testing here, Buster will probably be in the mid to low three second range, 40 to 80. That's cooking. That's definitely over 400 wheel horsepower, or it could be, nah, I don't know if it's more, but it's definitely over 400 wheel. That's uh, that's getting pretty good. I'm getting closer to that 500 number, just a little bit at a time. So I love messing with stuff like this. And it just, it's what gets my motor runs, what gets my gears turning, man. I don't, I don't care about going out there and, you know, clout chasing, showing off the car. Do I like, showing off the car uh, of course you know i put a lot of time and work in this and you know some people will appreciate that but i don't do it for me per se you know i it i don't get as much enjoyment out of showing this car off than i do driving it and just continuously working and developing and learning about it that's what i love doing and you've seen that so much on my channel over the years with all of my different cars. You know, like a lot of me wonders if maybe that's why my channel doesn't grow as fast as I would like to, it's because I don't clout chase, but I'm sorry, I cannot. I am not that guy. I have no interest in clout chasing. And honestly, my channel wouldn't be nearly as big as it is if it wasn't for that Lucas video going viral which, you know, sucks. It is what it is. But I know a lot of people who are true car people appreciate the content I put out. I just wish it was, you know, more people cared about that instead of people actually gravitating to fake personalities like everyone does nowadays. It is what it is. Side effect of modern social media is, uh, you know, it's all about the imagery. It's all about what you see and whatnot. I'm not gonna go off on that whole tangent because I could spend a whole lot of time talking about that and we don't want that. That's that's not for this video and maybe another day on an, another channel, not this one. <laughs> yeah, as far as that goes, that's all of what I'm thinking about now. It's all kind of what's cooking in my head. Kind of the next couple weeks I'm gonna work on going back, retesting the ruthenium plugs again with the more Dwell, testing the difference between different dwell times, 40 to 80, and then retesting the uh, side-gapped cell plugs to the ruthiniums with the increased dwell, once I kind of figure out where that is. But within that, you know, the dwell time might also, depending on which plug you use, more dwell might make a bigger difference, or less dwell might make a bigger difference depending on the spark plug. It's so many small little things, you know? that you have to figure out. So it's a lot of testing. That's why it's r and is expensive. All of that's coming soon, but otherwise I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this long video. But hopefully, you know, you're excited, more excited about some of the stuff that's gonna be coming. And uh, that's kind of the whole purpose since I can't really do too much out here right now. Um, but with that said, let me know what you think about all of what I've mentioned in the video and uh yeah put your thoughts in the comments otherwise i'm gonna wrap it up here for the video and of course you know what to do if you like the video give it a thumbs up share it with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already go ahead subscribe to the channel keep looking out for the next cars creative video